All right, welcome. This is a quick introduction to the Metasploit framework. Um, few objectives here. So I'm gonna explain what the Metasploit framework is. I'm gonna walk through Metasploit framework in Kali. It's already installed. It's already should already be configured and talk about how do we use the Metasploit framework for vulnerability and penetration testing. Um, this will be followed up with another video where I'm gonna go do a quick demonstration. So what is Metasploit? Metasploit's a framework um, and a tool that'll allow you to do some scanning, some vulnerability detection, um, and complete the exploit process also. So there's a bunch of modules. We'll take a look at some of them that are for all of these purposes, um, but it, it's really a framework to pull together all of these different pieces from reconnaissance, vulnerability scanning, and exploits. The tool's pretty old. It was, I think they started around 2003, um, it was an open source project, but in 2009, it was acquired by Rapid7. Um, Rapid7 now developed this into a professional version, um, which is for pay. It looks like the professional version, if you go to the website, it doesn't really say exactly what it costs. It's somewhere from five to $15,000 a year, but the Metasploit framework is free, pre-install in Kali, Kali Linux, and we'll take a, a look at that. Um, let, let's pop over to the website actually to Rapid7. So let me go ahead and um, share my screen. And here we go. We got Rapid7 up in a, in a web browser. So you can look through the products. They have a, a bunch of products. And one, of course, we're interested in is under penetration testing, the Metasploit framework. And from here, we can read about it, a lot of good information. What am I to use Metasploit framework for? How do I use it to help my uh, secure my networks? Because I want to find the vulnerabilities before cyber threat actors do. So you can read this as you if you want to. There's a nice product brief here. So if I hit view now, um, you can flip through the product brief and it talks about why would I want to do something like this, um, other organizations that use it. And most importantly, here's direct links for the download and some pen test training. Let me slide back real quick and go down to the bottom. You'll see try Metasploit for free. So if I select download now, it'll bring us to the screen where we have um, the download the Metasploit framework. And this will just pop you over to GitHub and you can get the free trial of the Metasploit Pro, as I mentioned, you can select by it now, look through um, the features. Um, but I think at the end of the day, the cost for a yearly subscription is gonna be to five to $15,000. Um, definitely worth considering if you're in charge of cybersecurity for um, your organization, because this is a pretty robust tool. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's um, preloaded in Kali Linux. Probably should have just kept my screen going there. And why don't we go ahead and pull it up in Kali Linux and we can walk through it a little bit. Let's go back to share screen one more time. All right, so what I have here is my uh, Kali Linux 2021.3 version open up in uh, VMware. If we click uh, the Kali Linux icon in the top left-hand corner, we can see that if we go to exploitation tools, that the Metasploit framework is highlighted there. It's in a bunch of other places. I can also say MSF, and we have a few things related to Metasploit that we can see. There's a payload generator and Metasploit framework, but really I'm just gonna go ahead and click the terminal, hit Control Shift Plus, make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. And we'll just, go to it from this spot. I could have clicked on the icon and it would have ran it for me, but I'm going to MSF for Metasploit Framework and Console. So we'll give that second to open up. It's going to pick a random banner and we'll see some, uh, some picture there. As this is booting up, it's always good to update your Kali Linux distribution. Make sure you have the updates before you start getting into this. And you can also update Metasploit um, by just uh, apt install Metasploit framework, and it'll see if you have the latest version or apt update with your Kali Linux. So it popped up here. We see that uh, this is the banner it gave us. There's some real good information about 
how much information is in this tool and, and the modules loaded. You'll see there's 2,176 exploits, over 1,100 auxiliary modules, 399 post exploitation, um, almost 600 different payloads. So this is the general statistics of, of you know, what you currently have loaded. So I'll just type um, clear to bring this to the top of the screen. And if you put in a question mark in the Metasploit framework, it's, it's gonna be a lot of stuff, but these are all of the commands. So if you ever forget, just go, um, once you run MSF console, you hit the question mark and go to the top, hope it doesn't too dizzy. And you have all of the commands. So the banner was that picture, it's, it's, it's random. So if your banner did, wasn't the same as mine, don't worry about it. Um, I'll highlight a few of these, but you can read through this on your own. Set's gonna be really important because we're gonna set um, variables within each of the modules and actually set the payloads. Let's go down to module commands. So info will tell us about a module. We're gonna use that. Options is really important. It's each of the options within a module or a payload. Um, and that's where the variables are that you're gonna configure with the set command. Show. We're going to use that one and use. So these are some of the key commands we're going to use. Uh, let's see what else we got. And you can go through here. There's some of the database commands. If you're going to um, populate the database and use that, let me go ahead and clear the screen again. And let's just walk through an example. So again, I'm right at the beginning of the command prompt. Um, little disclaimer, right? That Remember the national laws, the international laws, and the state laws. So everything we're going to do here is within the confines of our host machine. We have a Kali virtual machine. If we do execute something, it's going to be against a metasploitable virtual machine that's also available from Rapid7. So that we keep this all subcontained in a subnet that's not routable. You know, that 192.168 space is what I'm going to use. Um, so again, right from the beginning, one of the key commands is search. So we want to be able to search what types of modules are there. And you can use mostly anything to look around. So let's say SSH. We wanted to search what kind of modules support SSH. And I'm going to have to bring this down a little bit. So I want to get it on one line. So it may, it's going to be harder to see. Uh, but I'll bring it down online. And you can see that there were 70 different modules related to SSH. Some of these were in the exploit category, so they're exploits. Some are auxiliary, this is the auxiliary scanner, post-exploitation, so the naming convention um, kind of gives you an idea of exactly what it is. There's the date associated with it. Let's go pull up so we can see the top. There we go. So the name of the exploit, the disclosure date, then there's a ranking. This is kind of the ranking of what's the probability that this is gonna work. So you can see there's some excellent, uh, normal, average, good, right? So you can, of course, you want to pick the one that has the best probability of success. And then there's a description of it. So that makes it um, easier to find some things. Well, actually, let's clear it again. Um, we can be a little more specific. So let's search um, a particular CVE from 2018. Let's, so we're, what we're doing is learning how to type. We're going to just look for a whole category. Let's look at the dash. 2018, right? And you see there's 99 modules related to CVEs numbered in 2018. Um, they won't, they're not always there, but if I take a look at the information in the module, you'll see it's related to it. So it will pull up these modules that are related to CVEs from 2018. If that text is in the name, in the description, or somewhere in the information field. So let's get a little more specific. If we really know what we're looking for, we can search um, if we knew there's a vulnerability that exists through our reconnaissance and through our scanning. Um, CVE 2021, and I'll just pick 18556. And I didn't get anything. Let's try 18. Okay, so if I pick a specific vulnerability, 
there actually is one, and we can see that um, this is related to SSH. And I'll look at the info for it. So I'm going to click it so I don't have to type it out. I'm going to select it. So go ahead and put that in a clipboard. And then I'll type info. I'll hit Control Shift V to paste it in there. And it gives me the information on this module. So any module, you can just use the info command. Um, name of it. You can flip through the information, um, who provided it, and the variables that are going to need to be set, right? Um, it gives you password, gives you username. Port 22 makes sense because this is an SSH. The remote hosts is not set, so that's a variable I have to set. Here's the description of it, and here's some of the references. And this is actually what keyed. You see that reference CVE 2018-18556. So when I searched for it, um, this is how this came up in the search. There's information here on payloads. So let's, I'm gonna clear the screen again. And now if I wanna use that module, I just use the use command. Then again, it's still in my clipboard, control shift V. And you'll see that my command prompt changed to the name of the module I'm using. Now that I'm in the module, I can say options and it gives me those, those variables I saw before, right? These are the options that have to be set for the module. It already pre-assigned a payload for me. And here's the options for the payload, but really I wanna choose my payload. It decided that this was a good one but I wanna see what's available. So I'll use the show command, show payloads. And it'll give me a list of all of the payloads that are available that match this module. So let's scroll up a little bit and let's pick something we're pretty familiar with. Um, you should be familiar with payload, a Unix bind shell from Netcat, right? Copy that out. And this is just a basic bind shell. A netcat bind, so that's handy. So we'll set the payload to that. Set payload, um, what I put in the clipboard. Notice that the payload variable is now set to command Unix uh, netcat bind, that's great. So let's bring the screen back to the top, um, go back to options, and you'll see now that payload is set. So what I have set is this exploit is set for SSH. Um, the payload is set that if, if the exploit is successful, the payload I want is a netcat bind shell, um, and that will execute for me. So the uh, vulnerability will be exploited, the payload will be dropped and executed so that I would have a bind shell at the end of this. It's not ready to go because you can see all of these are required, required and not required, right? Since it's a bind shell, the target is gonna be in listening mode. It's gonna go in listening mode in port 4444. I could change that if I want, but I'll leave it. But it's good to know that that's the default. So I'd be concerned on my firewalls if my port 4444 um, wasn't blocked because knowing that these remote tools default to that, it's a good idea to keep traffic out of there. Um, and it doesn't need a remote host because it's a bind shell. If it was a reverse shell, I, I would need that in there. So all I need to do is set the target, which is the remote, ho remote hosts. So I'm just gonna say set our hosts Realize there's an S, it's not remote host, it's hosts, because I could do multiple at the same time. Using the Metasploit framework, this should be very specific, um, very targeted as you're testing your systems. So I don't like to put in a net mask, I could if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna pick a remote host, 192, 168. Again, this is unroutable, so nothing crazy is gonna happen. And it's local, um, 31, 130. Now I can go back, show options, and I can see that everything is set. So I've searched for a particular module. I was looking for a particular CVE. I selected a payload, Netcat bind shell. Some of the variables were pre-configured for me, but I had to set remote hosts. I wanna double check, triple check this, right? Cause that's the target. Um, and we don't wanna step out of legal space and we're keeping this within our machine. 
Uh, it's going to go ahead and set that bind shell port 4444, and you see it filled out remote hosts here, right? Because it, um, it already knows it from when I entered it. All I have to do now is I'm not actually going to hit it because there's um, nothing running at that IP address. I'm going to hit run. That would do it. Or I could hit exploit, and that would do it. And that would execute this command completely. If I want to get off of this module, you can see that because of the, the, the cursor and the command prompt is there, I just say back. Um, and now I'm back to the main Metasploit framework prompt. And then of course, if I want to quit, I can just quit and I'm back to my Kali Linux prompt or I could just close out this whole thing. So that's kind of a quick introduction on how do I get Metasploit up? Um, what are the basic commands? And of course you have the question mark to look at the rest of them. One other thing I want to bring up, and I'm going to go back to my browser. Um, I want to show you a great reference for Metasploit. So what I'm showing here is this is Metasploit Unleashed that's um, published by Offensive Security. This is a project they put together to try to raise some funds for underprivileged children in East Africa. Here you can see it right there. Um, so again, it's a nonprofit. If you're interested, you can contribute to this project. But you can see that this is really a high quality reference for all things Metasploit. You can look at introduction. Um, and when you choose the arrow, uh, right, you see it expands to requirements, Metasploit architecture, some fundamentals, some information on doing vulnerability scanning with this tool. Um, how do you develop exploits? A little bit about web app exploit detection and some even post uh, exploitation, a lot of samples and things like that. So this is also a, a nice reference that you wanna keep bookmarked when you're using Metasploit. Um, that's a quick introduction and I'm gonna follow up with a, a second video shortly, um, walking through this process against a specific vulnerability on the Metasploitable virtual machine. All right, thank you.